Welcome to the Voice of Salvation podcast, a platform dedicated to shaping family values rooted solely in the teachings of the Word of God. This podcast is part of the media ministries of Zion Assembly Church of God, with international offices located in Cleveland, Tennessee. We pray that today's episode will be a blessing to you. Hello and welcome to the Voice of Salvation podcast. I'm Pastor Rick, and my goal for our time together is to encourage and enlighten us in what the Bible has to say about family and how our family should respond to the relevant issues of today. As you know, we are in the middle of the holiday season, and Christmas is just around the corner. As a child growing up and also as a parent with children, this seems to be my favorite time of the year. The music, the laughter, the games, the special foods that we eat this year. We love the Christmas time, especially the music. I've raised my my children to love Christmas music. I know that some of you may sort of hold it against me, but I can remember uh, mowing yards in the middle of July and uh, having Christmas music playing. But the music, the smells, the laughter, and the traditions uh, that this time uh, of the year brings allows us many opportunities that I want us to be aware of in the Lord. And that's our topic for today, a season of opportunities. If we think about it, there may be many opportunities that we take advantage of to share the gospel, but how many times do we miss opportunities to actually connect with those near us that are lost and lonely, those that are hurting, those that are struggling, those that we can just uh, see by their demeanor and the look on their face that something is going on? Whether family, friends, neighbors, or even strangers, if we're not careful, our time can be easily consumed with, where do we go next? What do we need to do next? Where are we going to go eat? What shopping mall are we going to next? Um, We sometimes get caught up in just wanting to get our checklist or uh, our shopping list or our to-do list completed. This type of tunnel vision, especially this time of year, can cause us to lose sight of the true meaning of Christmas as well as miss opportunities to be a light to those around us. Paul declared in Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6 in the New Living Translation, he said, he said to devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Pray for us, too, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That's why I'm here in chains. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. I love how Paul begins this passage. He says to devote yourselves to prayer. Not just to devote yourselves to prayer, but have an alert mind and a thankful heart. Then in verse 5, he says, and make the most of every opportunity. And finally in verse 6, so that you will have the right response for everyone. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So how should we live out as we live in this season of opportunity. Number one, pray. Some may think that uh, this goes without saying, but nonetheless, it's it's just got to be said. All we do should be covered in prayer. The busyness of the holidays and the demands of culture should not be levied as an excuse to neglect prayer. So what should we pray for? Well, instead of praying for the best deal on gadgets for the kids or clothes or books for for mom or dad or or the the right shirt or the right tie the right pair of shoes though there's there's nothing wrong with that prayer let's begin with the prayer to have an alert mind and see the opportunities to be a light in a dark world the bible says in matthew 6:33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness And all these things shall be added unto you. 
I'm a firm believer that God cares about our needs and our wants, and He desires to fulfill our desires, but we must seek Him first. Ask yourself this question. Have I prayed for opportunities to encourage someone today? Secondly, Paul says to take advantage of every opportunity. If your family's like mine, in a few days we'll be with loved ones that we may not have seen in a while. Whether you're exchanging gifts, eating a meal, playing games, or simply enjoying each other's company through laughter and love, take the opportunity to show Jesus to them. You can show Jesus to your family just by being an example. Watch the words you say. Watch your your demeanor. When we we watch how we interact with others, that, that is showing Jesus. The Bible says to put on the mind of Christ. That's not necessarily talking about the mind, but it's talking about our attitude. What would Christ's attitude be right here and right now? You may be in the midst of some that are dealing with very difficult things this year, especially in the world we live. The the economy is rough. uh, Inflation is high. There are wars and rumors of wars going on in the world. People are troubled. And it's through that trouble that that they can have a listening ear and a yearning heart to be encouraged. Ephesians 5, verse 15 through 17 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Can you agree with me on that? The days are absolutely evil all around us. But he says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So take the time to listen and be a sounding board for them. If you can be the one they trust to share their burdens, praise the Lord for that. He positioned you for such a time as this. And why did he position you to be used for his glory? Because you prayed for it and you took advantage of the opportunity. Finally, Paul says, have the right response. Many people have the mentality that just saying anything is better than saying nothing. So right or wrong, here it goes. But Paul instructs us to have the right response. And that only comes by the Holy Spirit. By praying and taking advantage of the opportunity, you now have stepped out in faith that the Lord will give you the words to encourage, uplift, refresh, and renew for His glory. Too often we talk just to hear ourselves talk. Have you ever been guilty of that? But the Holy Spirit can give us the right words to say at just the right time. And those words, being led by the Holy Spirit and used by the Holy Spirit, can literally change lives. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, 11, it's the same way with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. The King James says it will not return void. It says it will always produce fruit. I love that. Have you ever planted a garden or planted fruit trees or planted just plants and never seen fruit from it? Oh, I have. It's kind of a running joke in my home. If you ever want a plant to die, let me dig up the ground and let me bury it. And eventually, I'll be burying a grave for it. Because it seems like every plant that I plant, um, it always dies. And many times, most of the time, it never bears fruit. But the Bible says that the word of the Lord always produces fruit. It says, it will accomplish all I want it to. And I love this part. It will prosper everywhere I send it. Now, I want us to look at a few practical ways that we can implement what we're talking about and take advantage of the opportunities that come our way. Number one, just be a blessing. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, 
so let him give. I'm talking about giving. Paul said, giving not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Acts 20, 35 says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. We talked earlier about being alert. This time of year, you will be presented with many opportunities to encourage someone. Well, what does that look like? You can budget your money beginning now to allow you to leave larger tips for any service someone provides for you. Do you realize how an extra 10 or 20% tip can change someone's attitude and encourage them? If we're honest with ourselves, this is something most all of us could do more of. Yes, I know we have a lot of expenses of our own, but if you plan ahead, I know you will be able to do it as well. Think about those in the service industry that that you may walk into and you expect them to provide a service for you. Just being a little more generous with our financial blessing may help them make it through the rest of their day. It can really change their attitude and their mentality. Or how about picking up the restaurant tab for a police officer or military personnel leading? Think of all those that are in our community who have committed themselves to serve and protect us. Wouldn't it be a great blessing to them to show our appreciation in this way, this time of year? Finally, and this is a big one, how can you bless your local church a little extra this final month of the year? The ministry of the local church should never be overlooked when we are seeking opportunities to bless others. In our local church, and I've said this many times, it takes all hands on deck to get the job done. And that's not only uh, in working together, but that's also financially. It takes everyone's uh, part, the part that they play. It takes everyone's input. It takes everyone's financial commitment to see the work of the Lord completed in order for us to get the job done. Our former general overseer, A.J. Tomlinson, had a plaque that read, I love this quote, Let us pull together side by side, for we won't be here long. I want to say it again. I just love this quote. Let us pull together side by side, for we won't be here long. Secondly, we can be kind to others. 1 Corinthians 13 4 through 8 says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. In Galatians 6 10, It says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Ephesians 4.32 says, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Are you walking in the forgiveness of Christ today? Are you living a life knowing that you're on your way to heaven because of the forgiveness of Christ, just as Christ has forgiven us, let's be kind and forgive others. In the usual chaos that people bring upon themselves this time of year and the increased tension in restaurants and shopping malls and family gatherings, remember just to simply be kind. Say a kind word. The newness of the gift you're so desperately trying to buy will quickly fade. But the kindness you share with a total stranger can be remembered for years to come. Lastly, serve. Matthew 25, 35 through 40 says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, 
When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you, or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you do it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. 1 Peter 4, 8-11 through 11 says, Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Did you catch that? He said, show deep love. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you a, a gift from His great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God Himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to Him forever and ever. Amen. He says here to do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies, then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 10, verse 45, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give His life as a ransom for many. Finally, Galatians five thirteen, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. There are so many opportunities for us to serve others during this holiday season, whether it be homeless shelters, food banks, food drives, nursing homes, hospitals, children's hospitals, or whatever the like. I know you can find an area to volunteer and to serve. It's the small token of giving back that makes our service to others so impactful. You know another place where your service will result in an immediate added benefit? It's your local church. There's always something to invest your time and volunteer your services this Christmas season in your local church. Maybe you're not a teacher, a preacher, or a singer, and if not, that's okay, that's great. But ask to help with the Christmas play. Run sound, operate lighting, help with the kids, help to organize Christmas dinners that you uh, fellowship and enjoy as a church so much. When you're a part of the church, you're a part of something so much bigger than yourself. And as a united force working together, it's the only way to fulfill the Great Commission. You cannot fulfill the Great Commission on your own. I'm a pastor. I'm in uh, full service work for the Lord, but I cannot fulfill the Great Commission on my own. Not only do I need to serve, but I have a church full of people, and the church around the world needs to unite together with the same goal, pulling in the same direction, preaching the same message, and willing to serve the same God, serving in your local church. As our time wraps up today, you may be asking, well, Pastor Rick, what does our discussion today, what, what have you been talking about that has anything to do with family and kids and marriage, which is the priority narrative of this podcast? My answer uh, for that is that those of us raising kids how much better would the world be tomorrow if we taught our kids today the fundamentals of what we've been discussing? Yes, the Christmas season is definitely a season of opportunity. But hear me out. So is every day of the year. So parents, you can begin today instilling lifelong godly instructions on living the Christ-like life. Take advantage of the opportunities. Author and motivational speaker uh, Zig Ziglar, I've read many of his uh, books. I've followed him for years. He, 
he uh, he he talks about changing your vocabulary from something just as simple as an alarm clock that wakes you up in the morning. He said, I never refer to it as an alarm clock. It's an opportunity clock. Yeah, when the alarm clock goes off, we're, we're groggy. Sometimes we got to get our wits together just to, to put our feet on the floor. But immediately we should thank the Lord for waking us. And our prayer be, God, use me today. Help me to take advantage of every opportunity that you place before me. So as we go through this Christmas time, as we hear the music, as we enjoy the smells, as we have fun with, with our family and, and, uh, and friends and coworkers, and as, you know, just the, the sense, the, the air, the environment just seems a little bit more joyful this time of year, let's remember to take advantage of every opportunity. I'm Pastor Rick. Thank you for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to be with you. For questions or comments, you can email us at voiceofsalvationpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, John 317.